So the film I chose to do for this um, film review was Buffalo Girls. Um, and the first developmental theory that I saw throughout this film, um, and I think probably one of the most key to note, is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, because from what I could see, it was a big reason why the girls fought. Um, so you start at the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is um, food and shelter. Um, and that is most clearly seen at the microsystem level in terms of Brockton and Burner's ecological system. Um, so to have these needs, like, you know, it's your direct surroundings, um, and that was a big reason why they fought. Um, they needed the money to be able to provide that for themselves and their families. Um, and then there is a little bit of interplay between the microsystem and the exosystem, exosystem level of Brofton and Brenner's system. Um, when you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs in terms of the second level, which is love and belonging. Not only are they looking for love and belonging in the microsystem, which is their direct family, um, but also in the exosystem, which is in their larger community. Um, the better that these girls fought, the more that they were bet on, the more that they were bet on, the you know, more money they made for their microsystem level, which was their family. So there was a little bit of interplay in between um, those two systems. And then at the macro system level, in terms of Maslow's, hier Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, there is the uh, esteem and respect, which they got from their larger community as a whole. Um, so the better these girls were at fighting, the more they got to travel, and again, the more money they got to make. So all these three systems kind of interplay in Broffin and Brunner's ecological model um, and fulfill different levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, the only one that isn't really addressed uh, in terms of these girls' development in this video is the self-actualization. I think that is more to do with their age. Um, typically, from what we understand of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you don't really reach self-actualization until much later in life. Since these girls are in middle childhood, it's just not really realistic to expect that. So then moving into the next thing that I noticed um, was uh, Piaget's system of like learning, how children uh, learn. And again, they're in middle childhood. So um, these girls are at the concrete operational stage. Um, they learn from what they can directly see, hear, and experience. Um, and they get all of these experiences at um, all three levels of Brock and Brenner system. So at the micro system, um, they learn that fighting is something that is not only normal, but almost expected. Um, they need to make money for their family to, you know, fulfill their base needs to be able to pay for food, pay for shelter, pay for education. Um, all of these fighters come from um, really low socioeconomic backgrounds. So they like have to do this and they, they learn that at the microsystem level. Um, again, playing into this um, at the concrete operational stage, there's kind of a let go of egocentrism, according to Piaget. So they're not so much focused on themselves and what they want. It's also a focus on um, what's best for their family. Um, and then at the ecosystem level, um, they learn that fighting is, or sorry, exosystem level, um, they learn that fighting is normal um, because basically their whole culture immediately um, is built on this. So there's people in their community that make a living off of them fighting. So there's referees and then pretty much everybody in the community besides just these girls' families comes to the fights and like bets on them and um, essentially makes money through them. So not only do they learn from their direct family that this is normal and expected, but their immediate um, community kind of makes clear that this is an expected thing for everybody to be able to survive. Um, and then at the macro system level, um, even when they travel out of their communities, uh, this is still something that's seen as normal. Um, you know, they go to different parts of Thailand and like continue to fight other people. And um, not only do they experience that um, through traveling, but also um, being photographed for a magazine, which we can assume wasn't express expressly stated, but we can assume that um, it circulated quite a bit through Thailand. Um, you know, they were photographed pretty early on, so it's it's pretty easy to say that, like, 
at every single level, what these girls are experiencing and what's like directly in front of them um, is encouraging them to fight and basically teaching them that this is a uh, normal behavior. Um, and then um, another thing that I saw was Vygotsky, um, whose whole idea was um, like the culture teaches that fighting is a learned behavior. Um, and this is taught through um, mentors, surroundings, and um, social structures, which basically hit all three levels of Brofton Brunner's system. Um, at the microsystem level, uh, the mentors basically teach these girls, so their coaches um, teach these girls that it's, you know, expected and normal to fight. Um, and the exosystem, um, the larger cultural surroundings, these girls were in, um, drove them to think this was normal. Um, they learned from their communities, is, this is just what you do. Um, and then at the macro system, again, very similar to um, QJ's model, um, you know, they traveled around and at the bigger system level, they were told that this is just normal. Um, the difference between Vygotsky and Piaget is that um, Vygotsky would say that like this is so ingrained in the culture and that's kind of why it trickles down. So Vygotsky would say it's more of a trickle down from the macro system level to these girls, whereas Piaget would say it's more of um, an expansion from the micro system level. Um, and then finally, um, what I saw was um, Erickson um, and his in industry versus inferiority. So again, these girls are in middle childhood um, and in the industry, industry versus inferiority, um, which is the conflict that they're in at this age group, they begin to judge themselves as winners or losers. Um, and this is very clearly seen through fighting. You either win or you lose. Um, but not only do they judge themselves based on whether or not they want to fight, um, it's more about how others view their accomplishments. So, for example, um, Pet might not see herself as much of a loser when she like loses a fight because her family seemed to be very encouraging. Um, when she would lose a fight, they would tell her like, oh, you'll get them next time. You'll fight harder next time. You can't always win every fight. Whereas um, Tam, I believe her name was, Stam. Stam um, probably would see herself as more of a loser when she would lose a fight because it was very apparent like when she would lose that her coaches and her family were very hard on her and they were like, what's wrong with you? We taught you this. Why can't you do it better? Um, so, you know, that's kind of how Erickson's um, industry industry versus inferiority plays in. Um, at the micro system, again, it, it's um, how the family like praises the child for winning or losing or how her coaches um, praise her for winning or losing. And then at the exosystem, exosystem level, um, this is really clearly seen in how much um, a child is injected during a fight. So even in the midst of while these girls are fighting, they're finding out from the larger community at the exosystem level um, how much they're worth in a real monetary value. Um, and that can play into um, whether or not they see themselves as winners or losers because their larger cultural system is literally throwing money at them and letting them know in real time whether or not they're going to be a winner or a loser. Um, and then at the macro system level for this um, industry versus inferiority, um, you know, the more that they fight and the better that they do, um, they basically um, have an elevated status, um, not only through their accomplishments, but through like the money they get through their fighting. Um, I mean, money obviously like elevates people. Um, as you can see with Stam, she is like the championship fighter. And because of this, she like got to have a home. Whereas Pet, who wasn't as good, um, had to be sent away. And so like at this macro system level, um, you can see where the girls really um, differ uh, under this model. Um, so, you know, I'd be interested to see like how this plays out for them as they reach adulthood. Um, there wasn't really much covered in that, but um, yeah, this, uh, that's basically what I saw. Overall, I found this video very interesting. Um, I think it speaks quite highly that, um, you know, development is uh, contextual and multicultural. 
um, here in America, if we were to do something like that, um, a lot of people would do that as child abuse, but in Thailand, it's so ingrained in their culture and so normal that nobody really bats an eye at it. It's just something that you do. Um, so yeah, this was a really good demonstration of how, um, how development really depends on like what culture you come from and what your background is. So that's all I've got on that.